In this video, we're going to talk about rectangular waveforms. Now, there's many different waveforms that I'm sure you've seen. You've seen this one. This is the sine wave. You've seen that in trig and in digital circuits, if you've learned that already. And there's also the triangle wave. But in this video, we're going to talk about the rectangular wave. The rectangular wave looks like this. Now in a digital circuit, this would be the on state and this would be the off state. If you were to plot voltage on the y axis and time on the x axis, you can get something that looked like that. Now the time period for which the circuit is in the on state or when the voltage is high we're going to call that t1 and that represents the pulse width of the rectangular wave t2 would be the time when the circuit is in the off state or when the voltage is low this is known as sw which stands for space width the cycle time is the sum of T1 and T2 is the pulse width plus the space width. So the cycle time would represent this, the time period from point A to point B in that illustration. So it's just a sum of T1 and T2. The frequency is 1 divided by the period. In this case, the period is the cycle time. And there's something called the duty cycle. The duty cycle tells you the percentage of each cycle in which the wave is in the on state. So in this case, the duty cycle is the pulse width divided by the cycle time times 100%. So those are some formulas that are associated with rectangular waveforms if you're dealing with circuits and things like that. Now let's work on some example problems. So let's say that we have this particular rectangular waveform. By the way, at a duty cycle of 50%, the rectangular waveform becomes a square wave. Actually, let me draw a different one. So let's say that the pulse width is 20 milliseconds and the space width that's when the circuit is off, that's 5 milliseconds. With this information, go ahead and calculate the cycle time, the frequency, and the duty cycle of this rectangular wave. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. So we have T1, which is 20 milliseconds, and T2, that's 5 milliseconds. So the cycle time is going to be the pulse width, T1, plus the space width, T2. So it's 20 plus 5, it's 25 milliseconds. Now, to convert milliseconds into seconds, divided by 1,000. So 25 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.025 seconds. So that is the cycle time for this particular rectangular wave. That's the time between this point and that point. Now, let's calculate the frequency. The frequency is the reciprocal of the cycle time. It's 1 over Tc. So it's 1 divided by 0 0.025 seconds. So this is going to be 40 hertz. So this means that there's 40 cycles every second. Now, let's calculate the duty cycle. So I'm going to use DC to abbreviate duty cycle. The duty cycle is the pulse width divided by the cycle time. So we have a pulse width of 20 milliseconds and a cycle time of 25 milliseconds. And let's not forget to multiply that by 100%. So 20 divided by 25, that's 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 100% is 80%. Now let's talk about what this means. So the duty cycle tells you what percentage the waveform is on. In this context, it means that 
80% of the time, the waveform is in the high voltage on state, whereas 20% of the time, it's in, I put the 20% in the wrong spot, but here, 20% of the time, it's in the off state or the low voltage state. And so the duty cycle tells you the percentage of time the waveform is in the active state. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into rectangular waveforms and even square waves. Thanks for watching.